Hello everyone, welcome back. This week we're gonna add some organization to the front entryway of the home, starting with a piece of walnut cut down to the length we already want, and some metal brackets here that are gonna be used as railings on shelves, so that way we can store things like keys and maybe a little flower pot. We're gonna play around with some hooks. I don't know how many we're gonna add here, but we'll kinda get a rough estimate on spacing and play around with it as we go. With a rough estimate of how I wanted this organizer to look, I went over to my table saw and I just cut one long strip at about three inches wide. This strip will act as both of my shelves. We'll cut this piece down into one that is 19 inches and the other that is about 10. And we're gonna do that right about now. So here we are at the chop saw. We're gonna make our final cut for the shelves. And then after that, we're done with both the table saw and the miter saw. This is a really easy project. You don't need a whole lot to do this. Perfect for just a weekend build while I take care of some other things. With the final cuts made, I went ahead and I just took these uh, pieces back over to that slab that I was using and just laid them out so that way I got a better feel for how everything was gonna look. Here is where I was debating whether I should thin down the shelves, uh, maybe make them a little bit more shallow because I didn't know if they were gonna stick out too far. Uh, ultimately, I did like the way that they looked. So I got the hardware and was checking to see if I liked the look of these ones. If not, I guess I could always get different stuff and this would be a good time to stop what I was doing and go run that errand. But lucky for me, I was happy with how it looked. Uh, I sent a picture to my wife and she was happy with how it looked, which is even better. I still have to add some hooks over here, which I don't have the hardware for. And then I think I need to grab another one of these so that way I can shove it down here and be able to hang things, um, maybe like keys or sunglasses. But anyways, once we had an idea of how the finished project was going to look, it was time to drill some holes for these brackets to sit into. So for the location of the brackets, I didn't do anything too crazy. I just found equal spacing on either side and a reveal on the front that I was happy with, remembering that I needed to round over those edges still. Um, and I grabbed a pencil and I just traced around where these brackets sat. And then I drew a line corner to corner to make a little X in each one of the boxes. And right in the center was obviously the center. That's where I drill my holes. Now the square that I had been using previously was slightly off and I would notice it when I was making bigger cuts. So I went online and I actually picked up some of these engineering squares. They are probably about a fraction of the price of anything you're gonna find by like Rockler or any of the big brands like that. And they are dead square. I've already been able to see such a difference in my build. And uh, I've done a few test cuts and calibrated my tools. And I'm very happy with the way that they're working out. I also found this little guy that is just a handheld drill press since I don't have the room in my shop for a large one. Uh, this just attaches to my drill, um, just my power drill and I can use it essentially the exact same way. Now there is a little bit of wobble when you're using this because you don't have the fixed base. Um, so you have to really be careful. Right now I'm gonna be using it on like thin strips. So I set a couple other strips next to them to create just a solid base. Uh, I think I'm gonna try and make a jig for this so that way I can use it and attach it to one of my workbenches. Um, and then I don't have to worry about that side to side play and I can use it on small pieces like this without having to do a janky little table next to it um, so if you get one of these uh, maybe I'll do a video on me making that jig or I'll just post it on my social media um, and you guys can see what I did and maybe replicate it 
Anyways, after I was done getting all of my holes drilled, I went ahead and figured it was time to add some round over. There wasn't a whole lot left to do on this project, and this project didn't take any time at all. So I rounded these edges over, and then I took my shelves and I rounded those bad boys over as well. Just remember that when you're rounding these over, you don't want to round over one of the edges. So you want to keep one edge with nice crisp lines. That's going to be the edge that you do your glue up on against your main board and uh, where your shelf's going to sit against it. So you don't want that end to be rounded that you're going to have to recut your shelves and probably double the hour and a half that it takes to make this project, which could be devastating. For those of you guys watching, I'm assuming you are also in the group of people who watched my workbench build. So next week, we're gonna be doing a video on how to add a flip up tabletop to the side of the workbench. And that's gonna be our first official upgrade we're making to the workbench build. Um, and we're gonna be able to see how to do a laminate top. It's gonna to be my first time doing laminate. So I'm gonna start that tomorrow and hopefully I don't mess anything up. So while you're watching this actually, if you're watching it the same day I released it, then I am currently probably messing something up in the garage. How fun. Uh, but back to the build, before I put anything away, I figured it was time to add some way to mount this to the wall. Now I went with some French cleats just using the same walnut that I had left over from this, uh, the board that I cut all of this from. So everything was the same, I guess, grain pattern. Not that it matters on the back, but I'm just gonna mess around with my spacing, see exactly where I want these, and then I'm gonna hog out some wood with the router mostly, and then I'll go around and I'll chisel the edges. Um, I haven't done this too much, and actually when I was planning on doing this, I could have sworn I had a templating bit, but I didn't. So I did my best just going back and forth on the router and taking out all of this material and then cleaning it up with my chisel, which I did a decent enough job. Not that you're ever gonna see it. So while I'm sitting here uh, watching myself build something, I'm actually uh, thinking of a way to thank all almost 600 of you guys for subscribing to the channel, showing me some love, liking my videos, watching all my stuff. Um, why don't you go ahead and drop down in the comments below and tell me what it is that you would like to have as a project and I'll pick one of you guys um, just at random and we'll try to make that happen. Um, free of charge of course, I'll build it for you. Uh, maybe we'll design it together and that might make for a uh, a fun little thing to do every now and again. Anyways, with this uh, area just cut out, I'm gonna go ahead and I just squeezed in some CA glue once I figured out how to work the bottle, and then some wood glue, and then I did end up going through and adding a couple of screws just to hold it in because I didn't actually add a ton of wood glue. Um, but this is just securing my French cleat in place and then I'll flip it over and it's time to start adding our shelves on there. After I had that top cleat installed, I went ahead and I just sanded down the shelves so that way I had a nice flat reference line to sit up against the, uh, the backing for the glue up and just nice softened corners with no burn marks from the router and it was time to glue those into place. And while I sat in this feels like a good time to go back and retouch on what I had said earlier. Um, so yeah, go ahead and drop down in the comments below and uh, yeah, I'll pick one of you guys and um, we can kind of pick a project together, whether it's one of these, um, a knife rack, a cutting board, something just that I can ship your way without breaking the bank. Obviously, I'm not gonna build you a house, but I think we can come to agreement on something that would 
just be a nice thing to have. Maybe we can pick something new that I can also turn into a video. So that way, if any of you guys want to build something similar, then we can do that. Um, I think that would be a fun little thing to start doing for you guys. If it ends up being successful, maybe we can do it every, I don't know, couple months or so. Now, going back to the build, um, for the placement for the shelves, I did the exact same thing that I did for the, um, for the cleat, was I added just a bit of wood glue, um, a couple drops of CA glue, so that way it can work as a clamp. And then I did end up going again to the back and uh, putting a couple screws. Now I wasn't gonna do this originally. Um, see, I just used my square to make sure my shelf is nice and straight the whole length. Um, I wasn't going to add any screws, but then my wife had told me, oh, that's such a nice little shelf that I can add a flower pot. So then I didn't know how crazy she was gonna go as far as adding things on there. So I figured the more strength, the better. The screws are gonna be in from the back. You're never gonna see them. Better safe than sorry. So got that first shelf installed, got the second shelf installed, just using the exact same thing, using my square to keep everything, you guessed it, nice and square. Um, and then, yeah, just adding screws to the back, which I didn't actually end up filming because I wasn't originally going to do. But if you've seen the screws installed, you probably can guess how I did it. After everything was glued and nice and cleaned up, I ran to the store and I grabbed another one of these little brackets. Now this is the one I was talking about earlier that you could hang, I don't know, a pair of sunglasses from, which you can probably tell from the photo in the description. That's how it's being used. And I drilled some holes. Now this would have been nice to do before I sanded, but with the tape there, it didn't create any blowout. And now we can see how this thing is actually starting to look. Still need to add the um, hooks. So let's go ahead and do that now. I got these nice, easily removable hooks. Um, I didn't like the screws that came with it. So I had to add my own because the other one would have gone all the way through the piece and we can't have that. So I just place one. Uh, make sure it lines up nice and straight with my reference line. I grabbed a self-centering bit because this can save your life when you're trying to add hardware and keep it nice and square without moving side to side. Um, and then I drove my screw in and these hooks were actually really cool. Um, they just slid right onto that little mount and that's it. After that, you can just pop them back up to take them off, which I did for the finish. Didn't even have to remove any of the screws or mounting hardware on the back to add my finish, just applied it around it. These hooks did end up being a little bit more bulky than I would have liked. Um, when I was measuring them out originally, I thought that I was gonna get probably about five or six hooks. It was really between those two numbers. But with these guys, um, the spacing just looked a little off, so I had to add a wider gap. This means that I only ended up with four, but when it was all said and done, it ended up coming out quite nice. Um, I have one hook that's not even being used, so didn't need it. For the finish, I went ahead and I went with Rubio Monocoat. Now this is my first time using Rubio, so I'm not gonna tell you guys exactly how to mix it, just read the bottle. I don't remember off the top of my head and I don't want to steer you guys wrong. Um, I will say that it really was nice to just put one coat and see the wood just soak up that, that oil and really come to life. Um, I will say that this is my first time using a linseed oil finish. And so I was stressing all night long that my uh, rags were gonna catch on fire and just completely burn down, of course, the workbench that I just spent a month building 
luckily, that didn't end up happening. Um, I did exactly what the internet told me and I laid out my rags on an open floor of the garage. I didn't have anything flammable around them. I gave them a lot of room to breathe and dry. And here I am uh, doing a voice recording at the workbench that I was fearing for its life a couple days ago. Um, but anyways, once all of the excess oil was rubbed off, I went ahead and I just added the hardware back onto this thing. And uh, then I finally got to see what the finished product looked like. Of course, I had to leave it here to cure for about 24 hours before I could, um, before it could be used for light use because the finish has to cure. But once it was fully cured, I got to hang it up inside the house and see what it really looked like. And it was looking quite nice. So this is a good little weekend build that I'd recommend for you guys. I want to say a big thank you for those of you who have watched the entire video, who continue to watch all the way to the end of all of my videos and who have subscribed. You guys are absolutely awesome. Again, drop down in the comments. I'm going to pick one of you guys at random and uh, let's build you a little project. See you guys in the next one.